everybody. Today I wanted to talk to you about budgeting and how to start it, where to start it, what to do. This is kind of a crash course, like a 101 on how to budget. So bear with me as I try and explain this to you. I'm just giving you like the cliff notes version and walking you through how I set up our budget and how I came to um, set it up in a way that works for me and the family. So the first thing you need to do is get out your um, check register. I'm gonna put this off to the side. You need a check register. And one of the things I have done to save money is I use a handy dandy composition notebook. Um, I have transitioned over to using my planner, but in the past this is what I had used um, instead of using um, the freebie ones that you get from the bank. So I just um, made lines straight down. This was my total. This was my deposit. This was my um, withdrawal and then I quick description and it lasted me a whole year I'll show you my current one that I used up until this year um, but it's we are on the last page as you can see I'm on the last page so um, I'm transitioning into my planner but this was a good way for me to have all that information for a whole year of spending and then I could look to see what I spent money on and I could use this information to help me budget. So you need something like a bank statement or your check register, something that's going to give you a true picture so you can be honest and realistic with yourself about your spending. Now, this isn't to shame anybody. This is just you being honest about what you spend and what money you have coming in and out and maybe where there may be an issue or maybe where you're really good at things. So the first thing we need to do is pull your check register, either online or the one you carry with you, and preferably, preferably one that at least goes back three months. So once you do that, you need to write down a list of all your monthly payments. It should look something like this. So, you need to write down your bills, in preferably in order, I messed up here, but in preferably in order of um, their due date. So, um, this is our house, umbrella insurance, Verizon, um, Methodist is a medical bill, pre-K for my daughter, um, a loan, our water bill, our Wells Fargo, Silco, Comcast, and B of A. Now, I, you should just write down the name of the bill, when it's due, and the amount. And that is all that we care about. And here I have starred my debts. You can also do that, but let's just focus on first write down your bills that you absolutely have to pay every month. So this would include like a car payment, car insurance. We pay our car insurance every six months. So that's why it's not in here, but that's something that you would want to put in here. Anything that you're responsible that is mailed or automatically set up as a payment is in the bill section. Then you need to average out your income. So um, our income generally for a month is right around 52.80. So. This gives me a ballpark figure of what I know is going to be coming into the house. And then when you take your bills and you total them up, this is the amount that's going out of my house. So now we have those two bits of information. Now we need to be honest with ourselves about our debts. So you need to look up the information for how much you owe on everything. Um, the minimum payment should be listed up here. 
for what like is the absolute lowest you can pay them because we'll work on the snowball in a second. That's the method we use for paying off debt. But we need to know what we're dealing with, what our numbers are. So you need to list your debts. The next thing that we should take a look at and consider is our allowances. Now, allowances are things that we are going to allow ourselves to spend money on outside of our bills. Things like groceries, gas, going out to eat, haircuts, dog food or you know, animal care, um, clothing. Um, if you're like me, I like to have um, a miscellaneous account or an allowance for um, things that pop up that I'm not prepared for, and I like to have cash for that. Um, I give myself an allowance. It's kind of my fun money. Dave Ramsey calls it his blow money. Um, but that's just money you can spend on whatever you want. If you want the fancy coffee, that's what your allowance is for. And then when it's out, it's out. It's just like when you were a kid and your parents would give you $20 allowance. When it's gone, it's gone and you had to wait a week. Uh, similar situation with the allowances. But we'll get to what your allowances should be after you take care of your four walls. And then of course we need to also focus on having a savings account. So um, when we do this, we're going to break the budget down in a sense that we already have our emergency fund of $1,000 set aside in a separate account for a true emergency. You know, vehicle broke down, um, you know, something major happened at, the, at your house and you need to repair it immediately. Um, that's what that $1,000 is for. It's to give you that peace of mind and security as you attack your debt. So. If I didn't explain any of that very well, I apologize and uh, call me out on it and I'll, I'll explain it better next time. Okay, so anyways, this is what my monthly looks like. When I sit down, this is my month and it's just a quick snapshot of my life. So I know that my income is larger than what I have to pay and that is a good sign. That means that I should be able to pay all my bills and probably afford some groceries. So let's see what I have extra. I should have an extra, I should have an extra, mind you. I should have an extra 28.19 every month. Now. If you've seen my channel, you know that I have things like sanitary bill due, a city bill due. Um, I have um, a car that I renew every six months for auto insurance. So that those are all things that um, will come out of this extra as well as my allowances. So I know that I have out of my extra money after everything's paid for, I need to somehow budget for gas and groceries and this is for the month this is not for a paycheck this is for one month somehow budget for gas and groceries and everything else that's going to go on in that month so and attack my debt so in a if if this is a month where we have two paychecks because i get paid the 1680 and the husband gets paid the 1800 so in this scenario, um, we have our bills set up in a way that I pay certain bills and then he takes care of the rest, including um, the allowances. And that's just how it works for us. So let me show you how I have it broken down on another sheet of paper. So I'm gonna set that over to the side. So when I get paid, on the first of every month, I get paid. I sure hope you can see this. Probably not. No. There you go. I get paid sixteen eighty. I am responsible for house, umbrella, Verizon, nine 
Methodist. And I believe pre-K. So let me do the numbers. Okay, so when I get paid, I only have $60 left over, which I'd normally leave in our checking account for um, a buffer. I would use the word as a buffer, just in case something pops up and I need to pay it or I need to deal with it. Like my son needs new soccer cleats. I got it. You know what I mean? I'm not rushing to put it on a credit card. And so that's what I pay for and that's what I take care of because I only get paid once a month it's easier for me to just pay all bills out of that than it is to budget it out um, where I pay like gas and groceries for some things um, I have it more structured than that so when my husband gets paid we do it a little bit more like a bi-weekly budget so I pay um, up to here and then he takes care of the rest of the bills. So my husband, with his 1800 we have him do um, the loan and water out of this one. Because this is generally like the first of the month-ish paycheck. He normally gets paid the first through the tenth of every month. And then um, he gets paid another 1800 like it's like the, the 18th through the 30th. You know how you kind of get two paychecks and they're spaced out by two weeks and it just kind of falls randomly. So he pays the loan and he pays the water out of that bill and then he pays um, Wells Fargo, our electric, Comcast, and our B of A. And our Wells is 150, 190, 146, and 25. So the way we have it set up is so that there is extra money left over um, before we deduct out our allowances and our savings. Um, we already have, um, so if he just pays these bills and nothing else, we have $14.70 left over out of that paycheck. And out of this one, I have $12.89 left over. Now, in a perfect world, this would all go to debt and I would be debt free immediately. But I don't live in a perfect world. I live in a real world. So that is why we have it set up this way so that I have extra money each paycheck to take care of things that need to be taken care of. So we have, um, we put money into savings every paycheck which is 110 and we also do allowances. Now, everybody's allowances are different. Most of them have similar categories, but some people want a lot more allowances than others and I really feel like it depends on your budget. So for us, our allowances are 550 a month or 550 a paycheck. And I'll break those down in a second for you. So what's technically left over is six hundred twenty-nine out of that one, and eight hundred and ten out of that one. So. 
This is technically how much extra money we should have every month. But let's be honest. Crap happens. I would use a different word, but it just does. And so there are things that come along and nickel and dime your progress. And in a perfect world, I would be sending all this money to one of our debts. And full disclosure, if you do not have a savings account, all this extra money needs to go into that emergency fund, not into your debt. So that explains how I have it set up um, because I want to make sure that I have enough money to pay for allowances. Um, our allowances are um, groceries, gas, out to eat, me, hubby, dog, haircuts for hubby and kids, uh, miscellaneous, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Mm, I can't think. But anyways, these are just some. Some people have more, some people have less. The reason why you want to pull your um, your check register um, and get that information is so you can see how much you spend at the grocery store and you can average it out. Um, because one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to short yourself on things that you, you need. So if you're honest with yourself, you spend a lot on gas, you drive around. I have kids, I drive a lot. Um, so I like, I budget 80, but um, sometimes I spend more and that's what that extra money in my account is for. Because sometimes we travel and I have to have gas. It's not something that's a luxury like going out to eat every night. It's a necessity for us and our family. Um, we try and limit our going out to eat. I try and stick to 250 per paycheck. And this is per paycheck up here, by the way. But if you want to know how much you should be spending on groceries, it is $100 per person per month. So we are a family of five. So we should be having 500 per month, which is 250 a paycheck. Which is equal to 125 a week. I'll be honest, this is hard for us. This is very hard for us. We could spend that at Sam's Club in one one week. So I really have to watch it to stay on this budget. It's doable, I coupon, I look for deals, I shop the deals, and I do it. And it's hard, but I do it. Um, hubby gets, um, dog gets 35. Haircuts is 25, miscellaneous is 50. I know I get 40, I think hubby gets 30. Those numbers might be skewed. I'm not sure, it's late at night and I'm doing this. But I wanted to get this video out because I feel like knowing this information will help you budget better. Um, so anyways, those are our allowances. That's what comes out of, um, that's what comes out of our, um, paychecks. So, um, how I do it is because this looks like a lot of money, $800. It could do a lot of damage on my, on my debts. And I would love for them to go away. But the truth of the matter is that of this $800, I will probably spend a little more on gas than I had anticipated. And my kids will probably need something for school um, or new shoes or new cleats or something and this m amount generally gets dwindled down by 
by half. My kids suck about half of that away. And so I'm able to put a couple hundred towards my debts each time, but it's not as much as I would want. But I have to remember that this is not a sprint. This is a marathon and I need to pace myself or I'm gonna burn everybody in my family out. So remember when you're putting together your budget that you need to be honest with yourself and realistic about what you spend and what you really can do because on paper, it looks like you can cut everything out. But the reality of the situation is unless you're somebody who just wants to sit home and drink chicken broth, you're, you're going to be um, unhappy and then you're going to probably end up spending more money than if you had budgeted things into your life. So for instance, if we have an event coming up, um, I will try and prepare for that financially and put more money aside for it into our savings account to offset any costs and pre-planning for things like Christmas. It's gonna happen. We all know it's coming around. Same with birthdays. If you're somebody who likes to take trips, you know when you generally like to take trips. Are you a spring break person? Are you somebody who goes away during the summer? Um, do you do weekend getaways? You know, those are all things that you can somewhat prepare for, especially if you can track yourself over the last year. Um, you can kind of see where you tend to break down and spend more money. So, anyways, I hope this video helps at least get your budgeting started and gets you thinking about maybe a different way to approach um, your budgeting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'm more than happy to answer any of them. Don't forget, me, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, I hope you have a great day. And I hope you have a wonderful week and a great month. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.